Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Live with Colorado Beef. We are hanging out here in our studio kitchen tonight, getting ready to talk about all things burgers. That's right, National Burger Day is coming up, and we want to make sure we have got some amazing recipes for you to uh, enjoy and go through. Let me double check here. I'm doing double duty tonight. We're trying something a little bit different. So uh, I uh, have, there we go. Look at that. I can see questions and all that stuff rolling up on my iPad. So good to see everybody. But hey, welcome. It is uh, live with Colorado Beef. We're hanging out here Wednesday night. We are live in my kitchen. And I'll tell you what, very excited because we are talking all things burgers. National Burger Day is coming up this Friday, and we wanted to get you in the mood with some amazing burger recipes. So uh, if you look at our description section today, we've got a couple burger recipes for you from our friends at uh, uh, beefiswhatsfordinner.com. Uh, our friends, they have, man, I'll tell you, they have some solid burger recipes to get you ready. I know smash burgers are one of the most important uh, things out there these days. It seems like everybody is trying their hardest to make smash burgers. And that is what we are going to show you how to do tonight. Now, the cool thing about beef, if you are looking to uh, get some Colorado beef for your fridge, freezer, or belly, you can head over and visit my friends at the Colorado Beef Council at cobeef.com. Uh, right up top, there's a cooking tab. You can click on that. We have a local beef locator map. That is absolutely the best thing ever because you can find all of that amazing local beef uh, right here in the great state of Colorado. Uh, our ranchers and producers do a great job raising healthy, delicious, tasty beef. Uh, and you can uh, make sure you keep that in your fridge. Hello to Donna. Good to see you. Uh, I'm doing double duty tonight. So I'm doing camera duty and I'm doing iPad duty. But I can see uh, all of your questions and comments. So don't hesitate to let me know what's on your mind and what you are in the mood to cook. Like I said, National Burger Day is coming up Friday. Uh, and we are getting you ready to go by uh, having a little burger night tonight. Now, when you buy local beef, and this is something I learned years ago, uh, you know, we always think you get to pick the steaks and the best things in the beef and you don't get anything else, right? Sometimes it's you want steaks and roasts and you don't realize you're also going to get some cubes and some dice and you're also going to get ground beef. Now, when we bought our first quarter animal, I was, uh, I was pretty uh, amazed at how much ground beef I got. And at first glance, I thought, it's a lot of ground beef. What am I going to do with this, all, all this ground beef? Think of all of the things you use ground beef for. We're going to use it in chili, in meatballs, in burgers, in smash burgers, in taco meat, in soups, in uh, shepherd's pie, if you're doing the beef version. There are a lot of different uses for ground beef. That is great because when you buy an animal, whether you're buying a quarter, half, or a whole animal, you're going to get some ground beef. So you're going to have that opportunity to use that ground beef up. Uh, we also know that ground beef is popular. We know that smash burgers are popular. And also griddle cooking has become probably one of the single most popular ways of cooking out there. It seems uh, we sell a lot more griddles at Ace Hardware. Uh, I am seeing a lot more people buying griddles because think about it. This griddle's not just for smash burgers. I can do smash burgers, but I can do breakfast. I can do lunch. I can do dinner. Making that griddle or that flat top, if you will, something that is uh, very, very useful and not just a one item or one trick pony, if you will. So I have some local beef here that I got from my uh, friends at um, Colorado Beef Council, one of our local producers. Yes, Donna brings up a good thing, too. She said goulash, lasagna, taco, soups, all of that. So she is correct. When you get burgers, you ground beef, you can use it literally for everything. So I asked uh, my friends at Colorado Beef Council to grab me some local ground beef. I've got some local ground beef here. Now, when you buy ground beef from one of our local producers, keep in mind you're probably more than likely going to get 80-20 ground beef. That's going to be 80% meat, 20% fat. Do not worry about that. That 20% fat, by the time we are done cooking, usually results in a 90-10, right? So 90% beef, 10% fat, because we have what's called wash. So some of that beef is going to wash out. Uh, when we are cooking as well. Hey, it looks like we have TJ from North Carolina here as well tonight. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out and uh, thanks for joining us. 
Again, when you buy beef, you're going to be getting probably around that 80-20. Don't sweat it. As you cook, you're going to wash off a little bit of that fat, right? You're going to reduce it usually by about 10%. That's kind of what we lose here uh, in the drippings, etc. So when you get your beef, you, you will be able to see that this ground beef right here is very, um, it's separated, if you will, right? Came out of the grinder in long strands, and it is separated, if you will, here. We need to get that back together. One of the things we need to do is kind of work this a little bit so that we're reincorporating the fat into the meat uh, or emulsifying it, if you will, right? We're just trying to get everything back together to make sure we are um, in a really good place. There we go. Let's get all that going. There we go. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Moyer. Good to see you. Hello, Gia. Nice to see you as well. Looks like we've got all these comments rolling in, right? So make sure we get everybody set here. There we go. Double check where we're at. Looks like we're in a good place. All right. I like it. Let me back over that way here real quick. Cool. So like I said, first thing first, here's what I'm going to do. I have my uh, griddle set up over here. I am preheating this. I've got this going uh, on medium high heat. Uh, I don't want to get too much fat in the air, whether I'm cooking indoors or outdoors. I don't want to get fat on my patio, my counter, my kitchen floor, etc. But I have the griddle preheated. We're cooking about medium high. I went ahead and cut myself some parchment paper squares. These are going to come in handy here in just a minute. I'm going to show you why uh, that's going to help us smash burgers and release them a little bit better right here. I have a beautiful uh, handy dandy spatula that's going to help us flip our burgers, uh, keep everything from sticking. Let's see. Is it possible to overwork ground beef? Yes, 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 it is. And we're going to talk about that. So as you can see here, we've got our ground beef on the table. And as they ground it, it came out in strands. Now, if I were to cook this and smash it as is, it would be weird. It would be crumbly and it would be uh, a little bit texture wise, a little bit different, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just kind of uh, do some math here. I'm going to divide that into four, right? Hopefully they're all equal depending on how successful I was in the uh, math department. But we're going to go ahead and uh, divide those into four. We're making small burgers today. Now, very carefully, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I'm just kind of kneading this back together. I am not going to overwork it. How do I know I'm overworking it? When this starts to get warm. All I'm trying to do here is re-emulsify or reincorporate the fat and the beef. And then when I get that remixed, what I'm going to do is put it into a ball like so. So as you can see, these were very separated. We worked it back together. Now we're in a pretty good place. So we'll just keep working it. Make sure we don't overwork it. We don't want to warm it up. Uh, we just want to get everything reincorporated a little bit. And I'm just kind of going back, squishing it back and forth. Once I see a little bit of fat on my glove, I know that it's warmed up a tiny bit and releasing a little bit of fat. So what I'll do then is go ahead and mix it back into the burger ball. Now, as uh, we said earlier when we started, it is National Burger Day coming up on Friday. So in our description section, I've got a really cool link that'll bring you over to beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Uh, our friends over there have a really cool page dedicated to all things burgers. So click that link in the description section. That'll bring you over to beefitswhatsfordinner.com, and you will be able to grab a plethora, right? That's a good word, a plethora of burger recipes. And I'll tell you, when you think about it, yes, I'm going to make a smash burger, but what if you made a mac and cheese burger, right? Make a beautiful smash burger with a layer of mac and cheese on it. Maybe you do a smash burger with some pulled pork. I know what you're thinking. Uh, there are a lot of fun things you can add. You can add bacon to smash burgers. You can add eggs to your smash burgers as well. Uh, burgers, I, I look at a burger as a palate. Take that palate and add to it all of the wonderful things you want on there for your toppings. And then don't forget to leave room, lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle. Now, here's my question. Uh, let me know in the description section down there, the comment section, what pickles do you like on your burgers? Uh, do you like sweet pickles? Do you like dill pickles? Uh, I'm always curious to see what everybody likes. I know what I like. I will tell you right now. I prefer sweet pickles. I love some bread and butter pickles. Uh, I like the bread and butter planks. But tell me in the description section. Let me know what you like. And we'll uh, get all that stuff rocking and rolling here. Let me see what we've got for comments rolling in here real quick. Uh, looks like bread and butter. Dennis, I love that answer. Bread and butter is definitely one of my favorites. Let's see what else we got going in. 
Donna says bacon, mushrooms, Swiss cheese, and dill pickles. I mean, how do you say no to that? That is not a bad thing at all. Man, I love it. I love it. I love it. We've got more bread and butter. Gia says bread and butter as well. Uh, Penny Moyer says bread and butter. I love it. I, there's something about uh, the acid in the tomato that I love, but also that sweetness uh, as well. Now, did you notice one thing I didn't do to my burgers? That ground beef, I left it as is. I didn't season it yet. One of the biggest reasons I wait to season when I smash is this. If I take this ground beef and I season it, I think I have a pretty good idea of how much ground beef is in there, but maybe I'm not quite sure. So then I smash it and all of a sudden I think to myself, you know what? I'm going to add more seasoning to it. And then before you know it, I have seasoning in it. I have seasoning on it. Then I have salt in my bacon. I have salt in my cheese. And all of a sudden, salt plus salt plus salt adds up and we have quite a bit of salt. So I leave this for the very end when I smash it because then I can actually see how much I sprinkled across the top. When I flip it, I get to see how much is on that side of it as well. So let me go ahead and tuck this back in the fridge. Get that ready for later. Now, <laughs> I am going to stir up more controversy tonight after talking about pickles because we're talking American cheese. Listen, I'm just making a beautiful smash burger tonight. All I want on my beautiful smash burger is some cheese, and I want cheese that melts really fast. So we're going with a little bit of American. But I see uh, Havarti is good. Gouda is good. Donna said Swiss. I'm not, I don't disagree with that at all. I love uh, some Swiss cheese. All right. We're going to take a little bit of an onion here. I'm going to peel this guy real good. I have a sweet onion. This is a Vidalia onion. Um, I like these Vidalia onions. They have a good flavor. Uh, they're nice and rich and deep in their flavor. So we'll go with a little Vidalia. Dennis says uh, American cheese rocks. I, I mean, it really does. It's like you think about it. It's not a bad thing at all. All right. Now, I'm going to put a little onion on my burger, but I don't want onion to be the only flavor. So what I'm going to do is cut these guys a little bit thin uh, because I want that onion to almost melt, right? So it, it becomes an ingredient, not the only flavor that I have in that smash burger. All right, let's go ahead and grab another pair of gloves here. Havarti with dill. Yeah, dill Havarti is really good. Havarti is super creamy. Uh, it's, man, it's a good cheese on burgers. Uh, great cheese on sandwiches as well. Patty melts. Listen, patty melt melts with a little dill Havarti. Not bad at all. All right, let's see what we've got going in here. Uh, let me roll into comments and see if we're missing anything here. Do, do, do. Let's see. I can grab the comment section there. And, of course, because I put gloves on now, we're going to be difficult, right? That's all good. All right, let's tap that guy and let's see what we've got for comments in here. All right. Yeah, we're pretty good, right? We've got everybody handled so far, so... I think we're good. All right, very cool. All right, so comments are rolling in. If you have more comments, please do not hesitate to uh, let me know. We'll get all those comments answered for you here uh, and make sure we've got everything correct and ready to rock and roll. I'm going to go ahead and turn that volume down. Make sure we get that. All right, here we go. We're good. All right, so I've got my griddle preheated. I've got my onions ready. Buns. Let's talk buns. Brioche buns. Uh, I love brioche buns because there's a little bit of egg in them, a little bit soft, uh, and they crisp up really, really nice, and they take a really good toast as well. So I went with some brioche buns, nothing too uh, out of control big, but I've got my onions, my burger patties, my brioche buns, and then I have my American cheese, which we will get open. One of the things uh, I like to do is make sure all of my prep work is done uh, before I start smashing because... We need to get in there when we're smashing and get uh, cheese. So, excuse me, I want to make sure it is ready for me. Set this here in the fridge. I want to make sure that cheese is ready to go when I need it. So I have everything kind of ready as I, as I need it or in front of me. All right, first things first. I'm going to take that burger patty. I'm going to set that patty down and push it just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to leave it. I'm going to set my next patty down. Push it just a little bit and leave it. And then I'm going to set my third patty in there, push it, and leave it just a little bit. What I'm trying to do is get that burger patty set onto the griddle surface. Uh, and then I'm going to leave it so it has a chance for the fat to melt out. And that fat's going to help cook that part uh, and get a nice little crust forming. And then after about 
30 to 45 seconds when I see that fat bubbling around the edges of the bottom here, then I will see us get ready to smash it. Now, here's a couple, here's a trick for you, a trick I learned. If I'm using a spatula to smash my burger, if I don't want my spatula to stick, two different options I have. Option number one, I can use parchment paper. I put the parchment between the spatula and the burger, doesn't stick, releases easy. I also heard from someone that if you heat the spatula up and the spatula is a little bit warm, it'll melt that fat so that it doesn't stick to the burger. I like that idea as well. So what we'll do today is we're gonna go ahead and put a little parchment on there. Now what I do is use my spatula and I will push down. What I like to do is push and hold. What I'm trying to do is push that burger down just a little bit and then I wanna hold it so that it, the burger sticks. Otherwise, if you don't, that burger will kind of sproing back at you. Sproing is a word. It'll sproing back at you and then you'll have a smaller burger. So I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold and let that burger set like so. All right, and it looks like we gotta move this guy a little bit out of our way here. And actually, you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that guy. We're gonna focus on those two here because I wanna get onions on there as well. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that burger fat, right? And put my onions on there. And now that I have this set, I'm gonna go ahead and season it. And the beauty is I can see exactly how much seasoning is on there. I'm gonna season my onions as well. And then we're gonna let that burger do its thing. We have this uh, griddle preheated. We turned it up to high now. We got it preheated over medium high. Right before I smash these guys, I turn it up to high. That way it recovers and it, and it holds its temperature a little bit faster, uh, a little bit better, I should say. We'll be in a good, good spot. I'm gonna set these guys to the side. I'll be coming back here after we're done today and making more burgers. All right, now, while we've got this grill going, let's go ahead and toast our buns off, right? We like toasted. I assume if I ask you for your preference, right? Toasted, everyone prefers toasted versus untoasted, right? Is that what I'm learning? Is that what I'm seeing? Let me know as well. And I think we're good. We asked the pickle question. That seems to be the most important question of the day sometimes is what pickles you like. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead. I see there's two different ways to have my spatula. I have it upside down and I have it this way. I'm actually gonna go upside down because what I wanna do first is get that burger to release and we'll go ahead and flip it. And right there, we have the beautiful start of our smash burgers. And you can see we've got some nice color going on those burgers. I'm paying attention to the buns as well because I don't want those buns to get away from me. So we'll keep an eye on those for toast. Now we'll season this side. Like I said, the beautiful part of seasoning these at the end and not seasoning it when you mix that meat in is I get an exact visual cue of how much um, seasoning I have in that burger. So I make sure that I'm not over seasoning anything. All right, buns are doing their thing. Nice little bit of toast on our buns. Go ahead and put that bun there. And if you want, you can butter your brioche as well. Uh, if you wanna get them a little bit extra buttery and extra toasty, absolutely butter them if you want. Uh, we got a nice little uh, grill mark on there by not toasting them. So I'm not even worried about that at all. Like I said, uh, as we started this morning or started earlier this afternoon, um, don't forget if you're looking for local beef to head over to clbeef.com. That's the Colorado Beef Council's website. Uh, you can visit uh, the cooking tab and then there's also the beef locator map that will help you find local beef that's raised, grown, and produced right here uh, in Colorado. I was hanging out with some of our local ranchers uh, last week. Some of my friends, the Millers, uh, uh, they raise Red Angus. I had a chance to hang out with them uh, and just uh, enjoy an evening while they were uh, talking about some cool technology that helps them uh, be a little bit better at the ranch, right? Perform better and be more efficient, which is a huge, huge thing. So, all right. Let's go ahead now that that uh, burger is cooking. We're gonna add a little bit of cheese. <laughs> I say a little bit, but we're gonna add two pieces of each because you know, one piece is not enough. You need two to make those burgers extra, extra cheesy, right? All right. Now, when it comes to your burger toppings, your burger accoutrement, we talked about lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle. Also take into consideration what you're going to be adding to your burgers as far as the sauce component goes. Uh, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup. Um, someone asked me the other day, why is it when I smoke a burger on my pellet grill, I don't get a lot of smoke flavor out of my burger? 
And I said to them, well, let's dissect what a burger is, right? We have the bottom bun. We have the burger. We have the seasoning. We have cheese, bacon. We have onions. We have lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup. By the time you eat that burger, there's a lot going on. You may not taste that smoke. So if you have a pellet grill, you have charcoal, and you're looking to add more smoke flavor to your burgers, what I suggest is start a little bit lower in temperature and add some chips or add a wood chunk in there to drive some smoke flavor in your charcoal grill or turn your pellet grill down a little bit uh, lower and drive some smoke flavor first. We always say that's a way of enhancing its flavor or imparting a little bit of smoke flavor. Do that to get started and you'll be uh, much better off. You'll have a great flavor in your uh, burger of smoke and then you shouldn't have an issue. All right, cheese is melted. We slide those burgers off there. We're gonna move these onions over a little bit more in that fat just to get those guys going. I uh, wanna get a little bit more cook on them as well. All right, any other questions or comments you have? Let, let me know. Make sure we get everything answered here for you. See what we got. I think we're still hanging out around the same, right? We're doing good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So. Yeah, keep in mind when you make burgers, a lot affects the total flavor. I like burgers, right? I absolutely love them because I love the flavor of beef. So I try to add just a little bit of uh, toppings and a little bit of things that really bring out some of that good, rich iron and mineral and beef flavor. Uh, I love mayonnaise. You could also use mayonnaise as a spread on your bun before you toast it. Uh, mayonnaise works as a great fat when it comes to uh, toasting as well. Uh, but again, you know, I don't go too heavy. Um, a lot of times I may just do a little bit of mayonnaise and a little bit of ketchup on a burger. Just leave it at that. So I have a little bit less going on maybe. So I have a little bit better flavor. All right, look at that. We have that onion toasting off as well. But pretty easy, right? Like we said earlier, there are so many uses for ground beef. Uh, when you buy a quarter, a half, or a whole animal from a local rancher, you are going to get a lot of ground beef. And I don't say a lot like it's a bad thing, but it is what it is, right? You're going to get those cuts. You're going to get roasts. You're going to get steaks. You're going to get cubes. You're going to get uh, a lot of great instant steaks and, and roasts and those types of things. But then the rest is turned into ground beef. But like we commented and Donna mentioned and others have mentioned, it's goulash, it's tacos, it's soup, it's chili, it's burgers, it's smash burgers. There's a lot of different outlets for that ground beef. So don't look at it as, oh man, I got stuck with brown, ground beef. Look at it as sweet. I have a lot of different uses. And I'll tell you what, in the winter months, ground beef is great because that's chili time, right? When we get into fall, we get into winter, it's chili time. Uh, and you will definitely be set with a lot of ground beef to have some chili, chili fun at your house. All right, there is that other onion there. And I'll tell you, look at that right there. Quick and easy smash burgers. You can do these on a griddle in your backyard. You can do these on a, uh, a, a tabletop grill in your house that's meant for indoor cooking. You can do this uh, outside in a cast iron pan. You can do it inside in a cast iron pan. Hey, if you do burgers inside uh, in a cast iron pan, just know that your cat, your dog, uh, whatever animals you have in your house are going to smell like cast iron burgers. So that's not a bad thing. That's a really good thing. Um, that's all I have for you. It is National Burger Day coming up on Friday. So uh, head to your local butcher, head to your local grocer, head to your local farmer, rancher, or producer and grab some of that amazing Colorado beef. Now, I challenge you this before we go. Show me your best burger uh, creations come Friday. I want you to come right back here and tag us at Colorado Beef Council uh, and let us see your burger creations. Post them on our page, post them on this live event as well. Uh, you can post them on Instagram and tag us, Colorado Beef Council, tag me, Chef Jason Morris. Show off your burger creations uh, and let us see what you are doing with that amazing ground beef. Like we always say, Thank you so much to our friends at the Colorado Beef Council for having us, letting us uh, do these live events. We've been doing them for about three years now, and we absolutely love them. So thank you so much uh, for uh, letting us do that. And thank you for always joining in and watching us as well. Most importantly, thank you to our ranchers and producers who uh, are out there working those fields, pastures, uh, bringing those critters and animals in, getting them fed, taking care of them, and producing that amazing Colorado beef.
Uh, I'm Chef Jason Morris from my friends at the Colorado Beef Council. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, enjoy your burgers. I just made myself dinner here, so as soon as I'm done, it is time to eat. But leave your questions, leave your comments, because after we are done with this, even if you're not watching this live, you're watching it recorded, right? Don't worry about it. I'm going to come back, answer all your questions and comments. So keep cooking. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much, and don't forget, Colorado Beef.